So yoga has a lot of varying healing properties. And I touched on some already, but I wanted to continue this discussion in part two so we could really truly understand the healing properties of what yoga can do for you. So in the last episode, I was talking about the central nervous system and the calming that happens when we use yoga and we connect breath with movement. And this is similar to Buddhist monks and the idea that they are able to lower their um, temperature of the body. They lowered blood pressure, lowered cholesterol, uh, and were able to lower their heart rate. Um, So there are some amazing qualities that yoga has that can assist in benefiting and healing your body. Yoga also assists with any tension that's going on within the body. So if you notice that you have uh, soreness in your muscles or that your muscles are tired and fatigued, or you might have tightness in your shoulders or your neck or your face, so this is increased uh, stress in the body. You might notice that you are gripping the wheel of the steering wheel when you drive or that your face is scrunched up really tight. So I often preface, you know, to soften the face, allow the eyes to gently close and the tongue to fall back to the roof of the mouth because pressing the roof back towards the, pressing the tongue back to the roof of the mouth assists in releasing tension as well. Yoga helps with sleep. It'll give you deeper sleep as it can be quite taxing on the nervous system to be functioning throughout the day. Sometimes we need to have a more restorative and relaxed sleep. So using Shavasana or Pranayama breath techniques or even forms of guided meditation, those can also assist in allowing some downtime to happen with the nervous system uh, and doing some simple stretches or some gentle twists can help with getting better sleep. And if you are sleeping well, you'll be less tired and irritable and stressed out throughout the day and having less and fewer accidents. Yoga boosts the immune system Asana, the posture, pranayama, breath neck technique, um, assist in improving the functioning of your immune system. There are benefits in improving antibodies and lowering and mitigating different aggressive immune functioning like autoimmune disease such as psoriasis so it can assist in raising the antibodies and then it can also assist in lowering antigens that could be causing illness or disease yoga allows room for your lungs to breathe. In 1998, there was a study that was published in The Lancet about the yogic technique, such as complete breathing for people that had lung problems and congestive heart failure. And they found after a month of their average respiratory rate of using pranayama breath technique that after a month that they decreased the respiratory rate and the exercise capacity increased significantly so they were getting more oxygen saturation into the blood so it improved the lung functioning 
of using breath, pranayama, deep inhales and exhales. Yoga also promotes breath through the nose, uh, which assists in removing pollen and dirt and other things that might be in your lungs uh, or in the nasal passage, and it humidifies. So your nose is like a filter, and it allows, um, stops things from, you know, entering the body and into the lungs. Yoga also prevents irritable bowel syndrome and other digestive problems. Ulcers, IBS, constipation, it can all be exacerbated by stress. And I talked earlier about the cortisol. And if you're stressed out, then there are other issues that can come about. Yoga, like any other physical exercise, can ease constipation. And if you stress less, you suffer less. So we'll have less issues. So it eases constipation, lowers your risk of colon cancer. Uh, The reason for that is it's because it's moving the body, facilitating more rapid transport of food and waste through the bowels. So I talked about wind relieving pose and Allowing the knee to be bent and bringing it back towards the ear if you're lying down on the floor. So you're massaging your colon, which assists in digestion and the release of toxins and waste. So different twists could also benefit with the ridding of any waste to move through the body. Yoga also gives us peace of mind. And according to Patanjali's Yoga Sutra, yoga quells the fluctuations of the mind. So in other words, it slows down the mental loops of frustration, regret, anger, fear, and desire that may be causing stress. And since stress is implicated in so many health problems, as I've already discussed, from migraines, insomnia, lupus, MS, eczema, high blood pressure, heart attacks, if you learn to quiet the mind, you'll likely live longer and healthier. So allowing the thoughts to come into the mind, recognizing the thoughts, and allowing them to float away as if they were clouds. Yoga will also increase one's self-esteem. A lot of us are suffering from chronic low self-esteem. I've talked about my own issues of self-worth. And sometimes we can deal with these incidents of self-esteem by engaging in negative coping mechanisms, taking drugs, overeating, Working too much or sleeping too much can be negative ways of coping with how one feels about yourself. And eventually over time, we're going to pay the price with poorer health. So we want to take a more positive approach, practicing yoga, making sure that we are sustaining healthy views of ourselves and that we're maintaining the yogic philosophy which teaches you to manifest through the divine or to connect with the divine spirit that is within. If you practice regular yoga, you'll be able to improve on your betterment of yourself and you'll be tapped in to more feelings of gratitude, empathy, forgiveness and having a better sense of what your part is and your purpose in the world. Better health will improve your connection to spirit, which in turn improves your connection to self. Yoga eases pain 
And according to several studies, the combination of asana postures, meditation, and breath work will reduce the pain of arthritis, back pain, fibromyalgia, carpal tunnel, and other chronic conditions. Pain also impacts your mood, so we may be more irritable and cranky, on edge. Using yoga will assist in easing and having a sense of relief from your pain. And then in turn, you won't need to take pain medications or be on specific medicines that could cause other side effects. Yoga gives us inner strength. It helps us make the changes in life that we need. It gives us the power to take back our own personal strength. Tapas, T-A-P-A-S, is Sanskrit for heat, which is fire. The discipline that fuels yoga practice and that regular practice builds upon. The tapas you develop can be extended to the rest of your life in overcoming inertia or feeling stagnant and wanting change of your dysfunctional habits. You might find that without making particular effort to change things that you start, such as eating better or exercising more, maybe quitting smoking, they may be failed because we are not disciplined or we don't have the fire or the willpower to continue. So this is about making a commitment to yourself and wanting to better improve on your own life and well-being. Yoga connects you with guidance. A good yoga teacher will assist you in improving on your health. They will guide you through the postures and adjust throughout so you can get deeper into your postures and getting a more full effect of the pose. Yoga will bring about hard truths and compassion for yourself and others, which will in turn help you relax, and it will also enhance your own personal practice. Having a good relationship with your teacher will definitely go a long way in promoting your own health. So you want to connect with teachers. I've always seen my role as a healer is to guide. My role is not to save and to fix, but it's to show you what you need to do so you can improve for your own life. Yoga helps us stay drug free. It keeps us from needing to feel like we have to be stuck on medications from Big Pharma. There are different studies that have shown that yoga decreases the use of medications for asthma, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, and even obsessive compulsive disorder. People when using yoga on a regular basis are less reliant on these other medications. And that's the whole goal is yoga is preventative and big pharma, pharmacy, pharmakia is all about a consumer keeping people sick because if you're healthy, you're no longer a consumer of big pharma. So obviously many people don't always encourage yoga practice because it will take away from the billions and billions of dollars that the 
pharmaceutical companies are profiting off of your own illness. But if you want to be healthy and not be impacted with the risk factors and the side effects of pharmacy medications, I don't know any risk factors and or any side effects to yoga. So I implore you to make it part of your day to day. Yoga builds awareness for transformation. Yoga and meditation helps build awareness. And the more that you're aware, the easier it is to break free of your own destructive emotions and your own destructive patterns and your own self-defeating and self-limiting beliefs and any other destructive ideas or philosophies that we have. Studies suggest that chronic anger, which is a destructive and unhealthy emotion, is linked to heart attacks, diabetes, and elevated cholesterol. So yoga can reduce in those negative emotions and bring about more feelings of compassion and connection and calming to the nervous system and the mind. It increases your ability to step away from the drama of your own life and to remain steadfast and unsettled when you may hear bad news or some sort of unsettling event. So instead of reacting quickly, yoga assists in separating ourselves so that way we can really look at the situation and make a solid decision. Yoga will also assist in speeding up one's reaction time. So if you have to make a split decision about something, it will assist in making that a more thoughtful approach and reducing any suffering within yourself or within others. Yoga benefits with your relationships. When I do my classes, I'm always talking about being heart-centered or leading with your heart or following your heart or opening the heart, right? When I keep talking about love, the love vibration, love conquers all and it is definitely healing. Cultivating emotional support of friends and family in the community will assist in improving one's health and healing. Regular yoga practice helps develop friendliness, compassion, greater equanimity, and it emphasizes in avoiding harm to others, telling the truth, and taking only what you need, which improves many of the relationships. There is a mantra, Sat Nam, S-A-T-N-A-M, and that stands for I am truth or I am the essence of truth. Um, It's all about being truthful and honest with oneself and others, right? Not lying to yourself, not deceiving, deceiving yourself. Yoga also helps in the use of sounds to soothe your sinuses. The basics of yoga, asana, pranayama, and meditation, postures, breath, and meditating, all work to improve one's health and is a toolbox. And I've talked about chanting before. Sat Nam is a chant. It's used in kundalini to assist in realigning the energy and helping with any blockages in the kundalini flow, the energy of the body. Chanting is often a prolonged exhalation and then it shifts the balance towards the parasympathetic nervous system. So here we are, and I talked about this before, about calming the parasympathetic, by calming the sympathetic nervous system, we're connecting with the parasympathetic nervous system. So when it's done with a group, chants can be very powerful 
in physical and emotional experiences. And there was a study that was done in Sweden that demonstrated chanting OM will open the sinuses and facilitate drainage. Um, I didn't know about the drainage, uh, so I'm learning things as I go along with you as well. Um, But I did know about the um, chanting of OM. And I have it tattooed on my back. OM is the universal connection and the connection to all and that we are all one. So when you do the chant for OM, it's an AH It's a three part. It's an AH OM. So when you're completely doing it, you want to make sure that you're doing it correctly. So you're taking a deep inhale. On the exhale, ah, and apparently that assists in opening up the sinuses and the drainage, but it also assists in connecting to spirit and connecting to others and to yourself. Yoga is also a guide to your body's healing in your own mind's eye. So if you contemplate on an image in your mind's eye, as you do in yoga or with other practices, it can impact your body. So people can often... So as you can see, there are a lot of healing properties with yoga. So it assists in healing the mind, body, and spirit. Yoga also encourages self-care. It's not like conventional medicine where you are a passive recipient of your care. In yoga, it's what you do for yourself that matters. And I've talked about this in counseling as well. You get out of counseling what you put into it. Are you doing the work? Are you making the changes to improve yourself? Or are we just complaining about our life and then we're not doing anything to change it? Yoga gives you the tools to help you change. And you might start feeling better even after the first time that you start your practice. You might even notice that the more that you commit yourself to your practice, the more that you're benefiting. The results will be in three things. You get involved in your own care. You discover that your involvement gives you the power to affect change. And seeing that you can affect change gives you hope. And hope itself can be healing. So I implore you, look into journaling and look into using yoga and mantras and meditation as means of helping yourself. Nobody can save you but you. I hope you found this to be helpful and I hope that maybe this kind of shifts your ideas and thoughts on what yoga can do. There is restorative yoga, there is power yoga, uh, there's so many different types of yoga that can be utilized. And just doing one downward dog a day is doing yoga. So make it part of your practice in your routine in life. I do plan on working on some videos here 
Uh, and I do want to wrap up this season of coping skills. Uh, tomorrow, I do plan to do another episode on meditation and the benefits of meditation. And I'm also going to talk about some other things that are going on in the world. Uh, and I'm going to touch on what the meaning of Easter is um, because it's a pagan holiday and I don't recognize that holiday. I don't celebrate Easter at all. It does not have anything to do with Christ's resurrection. So it's been completely and utterly distorted. But I do want to also start delving more into symptomology and what to look for when you're feeling down or depressed, uh, anxious. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about the symptoms in regards to mental health issues. And I have a guest that I plan on bringing on board uh, to get her input. And she's a licensed therapist as well. Uh, So I want to have her also come on and be a guest on the podcast and get her opinion on things and what she's currently dealing with as well with her clients uh, and how she's coping with the world around us. So I also want to start touching on some spiritual aspects of things and discussing more about chakras and chanting uh, and maybe even providing some other meditations as we go along. So I definitely have some more ideas and things I want to share with all of you and I hope this is helping in some way. Maybe you can relate or you can kind of understand or you can um, recognize where you might need to make some changes or improvements in your own life. So I hope everybody's doing well. Namaste. Namaste.